Both when building our van and also tracking those inevitable faults, one of the most useful things in our toolbox has been a multimeter. So stick with us and I'll show you some of the simple ways this can really help out. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything camper van and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. It really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I know what you didn't like. As always, with electricity, safety is really important. All the demos in this video use low voltage and low current DC circuits. If you're working on higher voltage AC or higher current situations like mains electricity or large solar panels, if you don't know what you're doing, please consider consulting a professional. Let's start with polarity and voltage. Let's say you have a piece of equipment powered by this connector. You want to rewire it to your van, but you don't know what the voltage it currently provides is, or which connections are positive or negative. For measuring anything, we need to make sure we've connected the probes to the correct connections on the meter. The black lead goes to common, or marked COM in this case, and as you can see, there are two red connections. We want to measure voltage, so we connect to the one with a V for volts. We also need to set the meter to the correct measurement unit and range. I'm confident this connection isn't going to be higher than 20 volts, so I'm going to set it to volts and up to 20. In my experience, these connections usually have positive in the center, so I'm going to start with that and connect the negative probe to the outside. But when we look at the meter, we can see that negative symbol at the beginning of the number. This indicates that the polarity is reversed, so the center pin in this case must be negative, not positive. We can also see that the voltage of the connection is 9.77 volts. Particularly when fault finding, being able to measure if two wires are connected together or continuity is something that is really useful. In this case, we've got three blue wires, some of which we know are connected together, but how can we tell? So to do this, we're going to measure resistance, which is measured in ohms, indicated by the omega symbol on the multimeter. So we're going to move the dial down into that range. It doesn't really matter what range you set it on for measuring continuity. I'm going to put it on the widest range, touch the probes together. We can see that that will indicate that zero is a direct connection. So then working our way through the wires, we put the probes across the two. The one here indicates that they are not connected. When we connect the next two, The reading goes to zero, indicating they are connected. And then just finally checking the last two. Again, they aren't connected. With the same meter settings, we can measure resistance. So imagine the scenario where our three blue wires should be connected to the chassis as a common ground, but one of them's a bit dodgy. So having found what we know is a good common ground, we're going to test the resistance between each of the wires and that ground. So this first one we can see has zero resistance, so that's good. Now checking the second wire. We can see on this wire the meter indicates 130. Now, because we're on the 2000K scale, the K indicates we have to times that by 1000. So that's actually 130,000 ohms, which is quite a high resistance. So it looks like we've found our problem. Let's just check that last wire. And this one too reads zero, so we know this one is good and have found our faulty wire. The third useful measurement on a multimeter is current. Coming up in a future video, I'll be talking about GPS trackers. This is a very simple and cheap one, but I want to know how much of my battery it will use if left on all the time. 
So, first of all, let's check it's working, connecting the negative and the positive to a suitable power source. Now, I don't really have an idea what current this little unit is going to take, so I'm going to start with the highest range possible on the meter, which is up to 10 amps. To do this, I need to move the positive probe to the 10 amp DC connection on the meter and set the dial to the 10 amp position. To measure current, we need to put the meter in series with the device we're measuring. So rather than connecting the probes to the positive and negative, we split one of the connections, connect the probe to one side of it, and then the other probe to the other side of that connection, so that the electricity is flowing through the meter. As we connect that up, we see the device power back on again, and we can see the reading. As the tracker boots up and connects to the GPS and cellular network, we can see the demand goes up and down. It settles at around 0.04 of an amp, which means it's only going to have a tiny impact on the battery. I hope you found that video useful, and if you haven't got a multimeter, I suggest getting one. They're available for a few pounds, and I have put a link in the description of one that I think works really well for the money.